So you've made a part that you want to mass produce with 3D printing. Great, happy to have you. But you probably want to put a little bit of text on the side. It might be a logo, it might be a patent number, it might be an identifier or a barcode, anything along those lines can be embossed or engraved onto the side or onto some side of the part. But in 3D printing, orientation really matters. So today we're going to talk about how text should be placed onto the sides of 3D printed parts, what to be aware of and what to be concerned about, and the things that you should probably avoid. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, let's just look at text on the side. If you're looking at text on the side, generally there's two options. You can emboss or you can engrave it. That is, you can cut the text into the side of the part, or you can have it expand and extend out of the part. If you're doing this on the side of the part, that is the best place to put text. You really want it there because you have that smooth, clean surface that is controlled by a 0.4 millimeter nozzle or some variation thereof. And that nozzle creates very fine detail that is very clean and very legible. Now, that being said, you want to control the height of this text. If you're cutting in, you only need to go in about a half a millimeter. That will create enough contrast. If you need really, really stark text, you can go deeper. But depending on your font, you might want to be careful because that can create problems in the actual production of the part that can create defects within that text. So try to keep it as shallow as possible, no shallower than 0.5 millimeters. Another way that you can do text if you don't want to cut into your part, then you can extend it outward away from your part. This is also wants to maintain about a half millimeter depth, because if you make the text any higher, then you will end up with it sagging on the bottom or requiring support, which means additional post-processing. And those are things that you just want to avoid because making it taller does not improve the legibility much at all when you are embossing text on the side of a part. So hopefully that covers the depth of the text. Now let's go ahead and talk about size. Generally, since you're making this text on the side of this part with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you definitely don't want to go smaller than a 0.5 thickness of text, then the nozzle won't be able to actually print it. But even more than that, you generally want to avoid text that is thinner than one millimeter, which can create some chunkiness. So there's variation there, somewhere between 0.5 and one millimeter features of the text. And as you can see right here, if you start with a very large font, it's very legible. When you get smaller, it starts disappearing. And if you try to do very small, like 10 point font, which is about one millimeter, actually this is more about six point font, it is so small that you're not even gonna see it. It is a, a divot, a wart, a mole on the side of your part that has no legibility whatsoever and might not appear at all. It might be ignored completely by the slicer. So make sure that you are designing text that is an appropriate size that has each feature of that text somewhere between 0.5 and one millimeter thick. Lean into the bolds, lean into the heavy sort of fonts, especially if you wanna maintain that type of information. Now, sometimes people wanna put text on the top of the part. This is not desirable because number one, the text breaks up the upper surface so it can create all kinds of weird artifacts as far as appearance that are tough to control. So you wanna avoid text on the top of a part as much as possible. But if you do have to do it, it is better to dig the text in and engrave it than to emboss it. The reason for this is because since 3D printing would have to move through basically islands of sections of the text, so like moving from the outer edge of an O to the center of an O, that motion is an extra retraction step, which can cause, again, some defects, can cause strain, could again then produce more post-processing down the line, or could slur or smear the letters if the plastic doesn't settle just correctly. So this is why you want to avoid text on the upper surface. It's a very complex kind of shape that you don't want to have in mass production because at some point over the course of 100,000 units, something will probably go wrong. And you don't want to increase your rejection rate because it increases the cost of the part. Engraving the text reduces this, and it is a more robust way of creating text on the top of a part than embossing it where the text is raised. With that, you now have very distinct little islands. They're all concentrated heat because they're small features where the nozzle deposits material and then moves from one point to another, which means it's very easy to smear. If there's not exceptional amounts of cooling, it's just a very fine tuned feature that requires a lot of things to go right. And you always want to make a manufacturing process as robust as possible. You want to make it as easy to create a feature as possible because that will create a better quality component more affordably and at larger scales. 
Now, we get to text on the bottom of the part. The bottom of the part is whatever surface is pressed against the build plate of a production machine. This you also want to avoid because that first layer can have some amount of variance where side extrusions can end up smearing the text or squashing the text or blending it together in a way that doesn't create a consistent aesthetic. That first layer has a little bit more tolerance variation than other areas of the part, definitely from the sides. So you want to avoid text on the bottom of a part as much as possible. The other issue is as the machine is laying out the outline of that text, it has to adhere just perfectly. But if the text is really fine, it will end up holing and again, smearing and deforming itself slightly on that first layer if it's not just perfect. So again, in order to create a really robust process, you want to make sure that you don't put text on the bottom. But we have a solution to this. If you really, really want to have text on the bottom or really need to have text someplace where it doesn't really belong, but you want it there for maybe identification within your production line, you can do what we call a hidden text. And this is text that is actually inside of the part. This is impossible to manufacture with any other process. And it's a unique advantage of 3D printing. So now instead of having your patent number stapled across the side of your part and maybe ruining the aesthetic of it, you can bury it inside of the part just beneath the surface anywhere on the part, you can put text. Again, you have to make sure that it's thick text somewhere between 0.5 and one millimeter thick to make sure that it's legible and that the nozzle and the tool can actually produce it. But you put it just below the layer and then you're able to print that text, cover it over. And then if you just shine a light through that part, now you see your text which means that your assembly technicians can verify what the part number is, identify the parts very easily in a well-lit environment just by holding it up to the lights inside the shop. But again, you do not have that surface defect of exterior prints or engravings or anything else that are not necessary. You can even do this with barcodes in some cases or a QR code, or maybe just a secret message to your customer that is special to you because now you can create some really interesting branding. So hopefully that explains all the ways to create really interesting text everywhere from how to do it on the side, how to do it on the top, how to do it on the bottom, and how to do it a way that only 3D printing actually can. If you use these tips in your design, you will make a part that is much more manufacturable and much more capable of getting to hundreds of thousands of units while still being very affordable and creating a nice quality part that you cannot get any other way, all without ever having to buy any sort of tooling or have all that risk of creating a new product that might need to be changed at some point, but you've already set it into stone. So let us know down below if there's other features about design for mass production 3D printing that you'd like us to talk about, and we'll try to put a demo together. Have a great day, everybody.